I think one of the things that frustrates me the most is that admissions representatives are just so convinced that they're helping society and doing just an amazing job at providing college access, when in reality, as I've discussed in many of my videos and in my book, Surviving the College Admissions Madness, they're often a source of social inequality rather than social mobility. Admissions professionals love to pat each other's backs at exclusive conferences and virtue signal superficial support for marginalized demographics on social media and woke press releases. But as I argue in my book, most of the time, the collective behavior of universities are hypocritical and not in the best interest of the populations that they argue that they're serving. Even the best collection of the world's most conscientious and thoughtful higher education professionals and admissions counselors participating in a deeply flawed and broken system will still produce unintended consequences that damage society more than they help. Much of the arguments I make in my videos are sociological or system level why, but in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about the admissions professionals themselves, because despite their considerable admissions powers, they receive mediocre salaries, they work long hours, and turnover rates are very high, and they themselves were likely average college students. And think about it, if two-thirds of an Ivy League campus's graduates begin careers in consulting or finance, and most others attend graduate school, who do you think constitutes the remaining people who work in their admissions offices? Certainly not the best and brightest students. And that was also something I observed when I worked for UT Austin. It's also true that some veteran admissions counselors wouldn't have gained entry to their alma maters if they were applying today. And that also includes me for UT Austin's freshman liberal arts honors program. Yet these few thousand people collectively decide the fates of millions of applications. Many of their future students are already more brilliant and accomplished than the middling gatekeepers rendering their verdicts. Most college applicants will never know who adjudicated their admissions decision, whether they received a fair hearing or why an outcome went one way or the other. Higher education journalist Jeffrey Salingo reminds his readers in his recent popular book, Who Gets In and Why, that quote, while many people initially enter the admissions profession to serve the needs of students, they soon find out that selling the college is a necessity in an increasingly competitive industry. Admissions counseling nowadays is more like a glorified sales position, and they're more like proselytizing missionaries who are more interested in your tithes than anything else. Increasingly, admissions counselors are becoming salespeople at the expense of their primary responsibility, which is selecting the most desirable applicants and being accessible to as much of a sub subsection of society as possible. Perverse incentive structures preclude heroic acts by individuals seeking change. So reform is highly unlikely to happen from the inside, something I discuss in another video. Individual admissions counselors may even do great and important work, yet it's impossible to undermine financial and budget incentives determined by senior university administrators. Tuition dollars and athletics revenues will always supersede student well-being. The only way to stimulate reform is from the outside, which partially explains why the best college admissions books don't come from universities or current admissions counselors. And so for all the students out there who have these amazing resumes, a record of national, international level achievements, speaking three or four different languages, just remind yourselves that you're probably already more talented, successful, and brilliant than the admissions gatekeepers who are anonymously reviewing your application. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can find my email in the information section of this video, so feel free to reach out if you're interested in working together.